Good morning. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Mann. <laughs> Here they all come. <coughs> Got a full house of spaniels today. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh, let me grab the kitty. Come here, kitty. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you're here, kitty. You can say hi now. Okay. So we had such a fun day yesterday. A little bit, little bit of excitement as usual. You know, nothing is ever <laughs> just, just, just get technical difficulties. Um, but some of you got to see uh, a little bit of our time with Ty Bollinger and PJ Broadfoot, and it, it was, it was so much fun. Um, you know, just being in the presence of people who care that much and people who are really trying to make a difference in the world. And um, so we flew out of Philadelphia in the snow in the morning, and unfortunately that delayed us by about an hour. We got stuck on the tarmac waiting for um, de-icing of the plane. And, you know, people always complain about being stuck on the runway for an hour. And frankly, the time flew by. Like, I didn't even notice that we were sitting there. I had so much work that I had taken with me that I was just reading charts and highlighting things and looking up stuff. And um, so, you know, no complaints. I didn't even notice. And right before we left, I texted Ty and said, hey, we're going to be about an hour behind. So we get into Nashville, no problems. And I'm like, all right. So Ty said he was picking us up at the airport. So, you know, nobody, when we get off the plane, go through security, get down by baggage, nobody there, get down by the pickup point, nobody there. And I'm like, okay, I kind of know what Ty looks like from, you know, seeing photos, but this is a little tough. So I start texting and calling and no answer from Ty. Then I went back through my emails. Thank, thank goodness for phones. So I went back through all my emails and I found a number for this guy named Travis. And uh, Ty had sent me a thing originally before he was supposed to pick me up saying that um, uh, I was supposed to text Travis when we landed and he would pick me up. So I text Travis and I, I think I actually I called him. I called Travis, leave a message on his machine. He texts me back. He says, oh, I'm in San Antonio or Austin or somewhere with the flu. But I think they're at the uh, Gaylord in Opryland. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I would just head over there. And I'm like, okay, Ty told me we were going to his house. I hate to go to the Gaylord and then be in the wrong place. So then I started emailing Mark West, who had originally gotten a hold of me, and, you know, he wasn't in the loop with what was going on. But he was nice enough to give me Ty's wife's phone number. And so I called and, of course, got a machine, left her a message, but she called back. <laughs> so after going back and forth with her a few times, we got a cab to the uh, Gaylord, and then it was all set. So... Yes, the wife saves the day again, but, but that's why Ty was joking around about, you know, okay, when you invite people to come, you really should give them some information about where they're going and what they're doing. So, um, so it was, uh, it was a fun day and, you know, Ty's just, he's a really down to earth guy, just so easy to talk to. So what is 
uh, happening is that he is doing a documentary series. So I think he said it was going to be a nine part series that will come out in April. And they're interviewing a lot of veterinarians there. Uh, when we left yesterday afternoon, they were actually going to interview someone from the pet owner's perspective because she actually has a small raw pet food company, I believe. So, but I didn't recognize her name. Um, and you know, so they're, they're asking all these people basically this uh, fairly similar list of questions. So he had like a two-page list of questions. And then what they'll do, each segment of the documentary will be about, you know, certain parts of that. And so, you know, if there's 40 people interviewed and they're all asked the same question about nutrigenomics, then if that segment is on nutrigenomics, then they'll take everybody's answers from that and kind of splice it all together and edit it and I think it's going to be really, really, I mean, the work that they do is just so phenomenally good. So I'm so looking forward to it. I, I, I kind of can't wait. Um, so it was an exciting day. And then we got a quick lunch and got back on a plane and flew back home with, with really, you know, kind of no bumps in the road other than kind of not knowing where we were for an hour. But um, it was fun. It was really good to see PJ. I had done a radio interview with her. Um, a couple months ago, and that's in the archives on Dream Vision 7 uh, radio, so you might want to look that up. Uh, she is a holistic veterinarian down in Arkansas. She told me there's three holistic veterinarians in the state of Arkansas. Not a whole lot, but she's been in practice longer than I have, and she's just a really interesting person. Um, so that was exciting. But one of the things that Hugh and I were talking about, um, and you know, people give me a hard time when, when I go read labels in the pet store or in the food store, you know, and I say, well, you know, these are not good ingredients or this is false advertising. And people get mad at me and, and give me a hard time and say, well, you know, you say everything is bad and I can't afford to feed what you feed and I can't afford to make my own food and I can't afford to feed raw. And, you know, Hugh and I were looking at it this morning. We're spending about between sixteen and $1,800 a month to feed eight dogs. That's a lot. That doesn't even count the cats or the horses or the chickens. That's a lot of money. And, you know, it's our choice to have this many dogs. If we had one dog, obviously it would be a lot less. And, you know, we don't tend to, like, I because I, I have less time, um, I don't do a good job of looking for bargains and joining co-ops and searching out, you know, where I can find really good deals. Sometimes I, like the stews we made the last couple of weeks, I found pretty good deals in the grocery store, but when you're buying lamb, it's just expensive, period. Um, but, you know, I don't want, ever want to make anyone feel bad if you can't do what we're doing. You don't have time. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the money to grind and make your own pet food. I get it. You know, I'm not putting anyone down who doesn't do things the way that we do them. And by the way, there's no one right way to do this. And you need to do what you can. You know, I get emails from people all the time that say, oh my gosh, I wish I had known all this. I feel so guilty. I fed my dog the worst food. I've been feeding my cat dry kibble for 10 years. He's obese. He's got diabetes. He's got urinary problems. I feel so guilty. Well, here's the thing. You didn't know anything different. You followed the advice that you were given at the time. A lot of it was advice from professionals. Sometimes it's advice from the person at the next cubicle over at your office. But, you know, when someone gives you a testimonial or advertises something and says, this is the best there is, you take that in and say, okay, great. I'm going to try that. Here's a good example. Uh, I had a receptionist whose daughter was at work. And her daughter at the time, she had a, I think a rescue beagle, but at the time she was feeding a, a decent quality kibble and canned combination. And she was at the office one day and the person at the next cubicle over started talking to her about dog food and said, oh, I'm feeding my dog the absolute best food there is. This stuff is great. My dog loves it. It's called Beneful. Now this was you know, 10 years ago when Beneful first was, you know, really being advertised heavily. And so my receptionist daughter started feeding Beneful. She switched from the higher quality down to a much lower quality 
because somebody gave her a testimonial. So that was the knowledge that she had at the time. And luckily, she was having a conversation with her mother about it. And her mother said, oh my gosh, switch back. So, you know, you do the, but don't ever beat yourself up because you don't have the money to buy, you know, the top quality, whatever. Don't beat yourself up because you don't feel comfortable feeding raw food. Don't beat yourself up because you don't have time to make all of your own pet food. You do the best you can with the knowledge, time, and money that you have. And, you know, people say to me, well, I'd rather see a a pet in a home, in a loving family, even if it's fed poor quality food, than see it not have a home and be in a shelter. So I agree. I want pets to be in loving family homes, but I want that family to do the best that they can with what they have available. And I also want you to realize what it is that you're putting in the bowl. If you have to buy the cheapest thing on the shelf, at least be educated about what is in there so that you can read the label and go, oh my gosh, that stuff's really bad. How can I fix that? What can I do? How can I tweak it? What might I do to make it just a little bit different? Well, I could probably afford to give my dog an egg a couple of times a week. I might be able to afford to buy a a can of sardines and maybe split that up over a couple of days during the week. Maybe I could substitute at least a little of that low quality food with something a little higher or with something, you know, if I have a little leftover chicken from dinner or whatever. I just want people to be educated and have the knowledge base. So we never, when we're educating someone, we never want to put them down. We never want to make them feel bad about what they're doing. We just want to give them the education and let them make the decision. That's all it is. So don't ever think that I am belittling people that can't afford to do what we do, or I'm belittling people who don't want to take the time, can't take the time, don't have the time, don't have the money, don't want to feed raw, don't want to feed home cooked. It's your decision. I just want you to have the knowledge. The same with vaccinations, the same with chemicals. Have the knowledge, know what it is that you are putting into them because they don't have a say in it. And we're in charge. So just, you know, use good decisions when you're doing it and do the best you can. Yeah, Susan Thixton's 2018 list is out and there were a lot of companies that dropped off. Not necessarily because their food got worse, but because they didn't want to take the time to fill out all Susan's paperwork. It's, she asks a lot of questions and she really digs deep and um, some of them just don't want to be bothered. You know, they don't think it matters. But for the pet consumers in the know, it really matters. So, you know, I don't live and die by Susan's list, but I certainly look at her list. And, um, uh, you know, I will, I will at some point put out a list of mine. It won't be uh, near as thorough as Susan's. I think Susan does the best job of anybody out there. But I, I'm coming up with a list of things that if I was not making my own pet food that I would feed my pets. And uh, I will put I will put that out. Yeah, it's a small list. <laughs> I will put that out. Um, some people don't want to. You know, I don't know if they don't want to know. I I think it's it's. You know, some people feel guilty because they can't do it differently, and so or they're just not ready to hear it yet. It's like anything. You know, you can say to people, you know, you should be nice to everyone around you. You know, you should not have enemies. You know, it's the uh, you know be incredibly nice to your enemies kill them with kindness sometimes you can you can change that um so you have to be at that point in your life where you're ready to hear it and you know our life is made up of a lot of experiences that are pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that get put together and when you're ready you'll hear it it's okay keep talking but talk nicely (laughs) Susan's list is on truthaboutpetfood.com.
So Susan's list is not about the amount of protein or carbs. That's not what her list is. Her list is about sourcing and cleanliness of the product and uh, ethics of the company. Thanks for watching. And remember, you can find more information on Dr. Morgan's website at www.drjudymorgan.com.